I come from a family where my dad always preferred to build something rather than to buy it. So he's a woodworker, and that really uh, inspired me. And this is one of the first things I, I made in college. Uh, it's a Japanese sword. Uh, I forged the blade out of carbon steel, and it's oil quenched. And the fittings are all made from uh, silver, steel, copper, uh, stingray skin, and silk. <laughs> it's sharp, uh, right? Yeah. I had this outside. Um, I, I wanted to have it, you know, the blade open, but as, you know, I trust you guys are all very responsible, but I still worry. So when it's outside, it'll be, it'll be sheathed. But if you want to take a look at the blade, just ask me, and I'll, I'll be happy to show you. Uh, you know, I got into this because uh, about 10 years ago, I kind of, I made it my interest uh, to learn how to make anything. Because, uh, you know, we live in a physical universe, and there's nothing that can't be folded, uh, melted, hammered, glued, carved, sculpted, um, or just, you know, mash it together. Uh, you know, it's, it's sort of like you learn the language of the material, and uh, the more you learn, the faster you learn. And learning this helped me to, a few years later, make this, which is a um, Chinese fiddle called an erhu. Um, and it's, it's pretty much like a, it's been hundreds of years since this has been invented. Uh, and before I made the sword, I was sort of like the outsider, and I thought, well, it would be so cool to have a sword. Um, it's too bad I can't make a sword. And then, you know, actually, that quote from Back to the Future, if you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. I was like, well, that's actually true, you know? So I just, you know, did a lot of research on the internet, read some books, and uh, four years later, there that is, and then there's this. But Can you play that? No, unfortunately not. Uh, I've only been playing for three months, and the presence of so many great musicians here... Anna, can you play this? It's got a bow. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone wants to try this, uh, feel free to ask me. And, I mean, the presence of so many great musicians makes it physically impossible for me to play this. <laughs> uh, and the thing that I'm here for... Uh, I got an invitation from Mike, and uh, Vanessa was really cool to, to ask me to come along with her to, to show origami, which is what you saw. And so, uh, like with Wally, -E, a lot of these things are just, everything that I fold is from a single sheet, and you don't cut it. So this is a human character that I've been working on, and I'll prove that it's folded from a square. Um, so you see there's the corner. That's actually part of the edge. And her fingers don't come from the edge or the corner. They're actually the center of the paper. So this is about, I guess, six or seven hours of work. A lot of it's just pre-creasing. Um, just putting those creases in and then later collapsing it into this, which is called the base. And once you have the base, uh, you put starch, glue, water, whatever it takes, and you sculpt it, which is what I consider the fun part. Um, and probably five hours after this, you end up with her. So um, this is a character from a Japanese anime called Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, we fold a lot of anime characters because they're, they're cute. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can. Uh, besides anime characters, I, I've always liked animals, insects. Uh, there's a lot of insects I have out on display um, on the shelves. So you can take a look at those. But this is one that I finished uh, earlier, uh, I guess a few months ago. Uh, it's a shrimp. And this started as a dinner table challenge with me and a bunch of other origami folders. Can we fold a shrimp? And uh, I mean, after that dinner, 
I spent like five hours just thinking, how would I fold a shrimp? Then, <laughs> you know, as a shrimp. Anything to delay a dissertation? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a fiddler crab. So I got started designing origami just five years ago. I was folding for probably 20 years. Um, but it was Robert Lang, who's a retired laser physicist, who kind of got me started in actually designing origami and, and thinking of ways to you know, create, create um, original design. Um, and the fiddler crab was something that he said, suggested. Because uh, the interesting thing about a fiddle crab, unless, unlike other origami things, is like a fiddler crab has an asymmetrical shape. So that's sort of an added challenge. And then just a, two more things. Uh, this is a mayfly. And this is Romanesco. So this is, uh, it's a type of broccoli. Um, but the interesting thing about this broccoli is that it's, it's a fractal. So that was the challenge. How do I make something that at least looks like a fractal? Um, have a spiral here, but every other thing is also a tiny spiral. So there's that. So I guess we have uh, Vanessa coming out uh, later. On the third day, yeah. yes. And uh, hopefully you'll be there to see the, the other origami stuff that's been going on. This is just a little bit. Thank you. And Thank you. Thank you.